worship God as we pray. Lord, I just thank you for waking me up this morning. Yes. And you told me that you love me with an everlasting love. And I was able to lay beside my wife and tell her your love for both of us and for our children and our families. And Lord, that is the truth for all of us. You want us just to know how much, if we just knew how much you love us, not a blanket love, but an individual love for every single one of us, God. And for that, Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. We are so blessed to be in the house. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be inside than outside. Can someone say? I know we've been battling uh, this uh, Arctic weather. Last Sabbath, y'all were so scared to get out your house. <laughs> but I don't blame you. Come on, say amen. <laughs> but we had a few, few people that were able to come last Sabbath. We made it through the ice and the storm and all this. And, and we had church. Oh, let me tell you something. You missed it. We had Pastor Roger Wade, the Mid-America Union uh, ministry, or church ministries director and he preached a powerful word and so again uh, you know just continue to pray for us as we go through um, this season we also know that the weather is going to be challenging tomorrow it was challenging yesterday they closed school and some other uh, places because of the ice so we want you to be safe look at your neighbor and say be safe be safe on the road. Be safe. Be safe. Be safe. And by the grace of God, as we pray for one another and care for one another, God's Spirit will continue to be with us. Just a few announcements um, at this time. I want to bring Elder Allen up and Sister Wilson up. They have an announcement that they want to make to you. And so I'll bring them up at this time. I want to say before we make the announcement I want to say this to you the servant of the Lord said we should not be concerned with the future but we should remember what God has done in the past I've paraphrased that but between the past and the future there is today and I want to speak about today in the past, we used to go out into the community, pass out stuff. But today, it's lacking. So what we're going to do is regenerate, re, I don't know another word, but we're gonna get you off your seats and on your feet. And we're going to go out into the community. We say that we are a church that cares. Pastor, I told him I needed time this morning because this has to be said. We are a church that cares, but we're not doing that much in the community anymore. We used to go to the City Union Mission, take sandwiches and uh, soup and go out into the streets and pass out stuff. You know, the city doesn't want us to do that anymore. Did you know that they do not want you to go into the city and pass out food? They can arrest you. But if I'm going to get arrested, I'm going to get arrested for doing what's right. There's a dying world out there. We see men on the corner that we're not supposed to give them money. But there are other things we can give them. Warm blankets, other things to keep them warm. A cup of hot drink or something like that. And we will get in trouble. But aren't you in trouble a lot of times anyway? So we're going to start doing what God wants us to do. 
Uh, Sister Wilson and I, I'm personal ministry. Sister Wilson is women's ministry. We are working together as a team. Uh, last, about two weeks ago, Cynthia Coffey came to Granat. She called me. She came to Granat, where I live, and said she had some stuff. She had about 10 bags. Was it about 10 of them, Cynthia? Blankets, hats, gloves, scarves. We're going out next week. We're going to have it in the bulletin. We'll probably be calling you because we want to have people that have cars. We want to go, you to go. We need transportation to take people out. We're going to cover every part of the inner city with blankets and hats and scarves. We're going to go to the children's center. We're going to go wherever there's people, and we're going to give them the things that God has given us. Thank you. Um, my daughter and I, we're just excited. Um, we were able to get 66 pairs of gloves. Um, and we're looking forward to being able to go out and pass these things out. I know when I go out, and I'm just starting from the house to my truck, I'm cold. Starting from the truck to the store, I'm cold. But just think of the people who are out there for any length of time. I know they are cold. God has asked us to go out and so I'm looking forward to going out with Elder Allen, and I hope we can get, you know, this is, the fourth Sabbath is our week for women's ministry meeting. But instead of sitting here having our meeting, I would like to just go out. If the women can get together, we can go out. Maybe we could have something to eat first, get our, our warmth and our strength up, and then go out and pass these things out. I'm sure, I, I just want to do something that's going to bring a smile to the Lord's face. I don't want it to stand before him when he comes with my head dropped. What am I going to say to him? So, well, we had the opportunity. Let's go out and pass these things out and be a blessing to someone else. Thank you. And um, last year or the year before, we went out to what they call Jurassic Park. We went downtown. And we put, George Lewis was with us. We put scarves and gloves and hats on the trees. We hooked them on the trees. We don't care what they do with them. We did what we had to do. We filled the trees with all these things so that those that are homeless, all they had to do is go to a tree, pick up a pair of gloves, get a scarf, get a hat. We're gonna cover those trees again this year along with the other places. This is gonna be an exciting year. I've got more years behind me than I got in front of me. And the ones that I've got in front of me, every hour of that, I'm going to be doing something for the Lord. I'm taking me and my little friend are going. And we're going to go wherever there are people. I want you to get excited. Get excited and go. Next week, we should have this church filled with people going out. One year, we had so many people going out. Uh, Josiah was so excited. We went, we, we sang on the streets. We, we gave out lunches. We went to the City Union Mission. We gave out stuff there. We're going to start doing that again. If the policeman come, we're going to give him something too. Before he takes us to jail, we're going to give him something. So we need your prayers. We need your help so we can get out and do what God wants us to do. Anymore. Let the church say amen. Amen. Elder Allen said, Pastor, I need some time this morning. And so we gave you some time to encourage our members so that we can go out and share the love of Jesus through articles of clothing and through other mechanisms. We praise God for that. Just a few things before we have a formal welcome. Um, we want to tell you that um, we want you to continue to pray for Sister Dolores Jones, Sister Dolores Jones. You know that she lost her sister about two weeks ago. Um, I was in contact with her. We sent her a letter, I think some flowers also for the funeral services that took place in Michigan. But we want to continue to pray for her because I believe that our prayers will add that extra layer of comfort to her, letting her know that when Jesus comes, he'll wipe all the tears away. And then we also want to pray for Sister Garner. You know, um, she's been 
down for a couple of weeks. And so we want to continue to just continue to pray for her uh, that she will get better. And then we also want to remind you of our leadership conference. Some of you got a one call yesterday um, that said we were postponing or canceling our services last night. We were supposed to have one last night, but we're going to do it today at 3 p.m. at the Linwood Church. All right. So at 3 p.m., we're going to have it at the Linwood Church. And so we want you to come prepared for that uh, so that you can be a part of the leadership conference we will have some food today too for you so that you will um, be able to eat right here and to go on down to Linwood Church just a, rem a reminder of the announcement that we had last week and also the following week we also want to uh, tell you that the officers list we are almost um, well, we've, we've actually had our meeting. Uh, we were going to show you a list today, but we want to um, do it next week. There are still a few people that need to be um, uh, talked to. And so next week we will have a complete list for you. Now, in preparation for next week's Sabbath, and again, our policy is that you will have a Sabbath to look over the list. You'll have a week just in case you have any questions about the people that you see on the list, and then we will vote it in the following week. Does everyone understand? So again, we'll hand the list. The list will be printed out for everyone on Sabbath coming. You'll look over the list. If you have any questions or concerns or comments or whatever you have about the list, you will be able to see me, call me, let me know. Um, we'll talk about it. Um, if it's something that we do need to bring to the committee, we'll bring it to the committee. And then the following week, you will have the list before you again, which we will vote uh, for the officers for this term. Now, on Wednesday night, everyone say Wednesday night. We've been having uh, Wednesday night uh, meetings, uh, business meetings, you know, in the summer and so forth when we had them. And we saw that we had a good showing on Wednesday night. And so we want to do it again. So this Wednesday night, we're going to have a meeting. You want to make sure that you make it to this meeting right after prayer service. Because we're going to talk about three uh, things. We're going to talk about the constituency meeting. The constituency meeting is coming up. Um, we're going to have to have our organizing committee in place. We're going to have to have our uh, nominating committee in place. Uh, throughout the conference that committee will be meeting I believe April the 26th and then our constituency meeting will take place the last Sunday of May and so on Wednesday night we're going to talk about that a little bit we're also going to talk about the few projects that we must finish up quickly and that's the mother's room uh, I'll give you a report on the door I'm gonna give you a report on the door and I'll give you a report on the bathroom. And again, we've already completed the, uh, the uh, allocated the money to the Pathfinders and to the sound system. We are praising God for our new digital board. Come on and say amen. And so, but we're going to talk about those last two projects. We'll also talk about the bus. The bus, we're getting a price for it to be painted so that we can bring it to the church. We've already talked to a, a potential a transportation coordinator that we're going to have. And so, um, and that person has agreed to do it. Amen. And so we're going to bring the bus. Um, I wanted to wait until it was painted to bring it to the church so that we can pray over it. But, you know, time is of the essence. We may just need to bring that van now. Come on and say it and just pray over it. And so we'll give maybe two weeks. Uh, we really want to get started with the van project in the beginning of February. And so we'll um, I'll talk with the uh, people and we'll see if we could even just start now and just bring that van over and get working with it. Um, again, we told you about the officers list. Please, um, you know, we're making calls. We're talking to you and we're, uh, you know, the, the standards in which we have. And so um, please uh, make sure that you uh, understand uh, what you're getting into because we want to go forward. Amen. Not a time to go backward. It's a time to go forward. And at this time, I am going to just invite uh, Sister Moss to give us the welcome. There are two guests 
that we have here today. I don't know if you have that um, information there, but there are two guests that we have, and so we want to make sure that those people are... Um, Amen. Praise the Lord. We got a pastor that is always willing, and I appreciate that. Good morning, Beacon Light. Hey, Amen. There used to be a time I had to say it twice. It's gotten so bad that Jerome sometimes he goes, Good morning, Beacon Light. And I go, What is that all about? And they go, Did you hear me? Good morning. And he said, Who do you think that is? And I said, I don't know. Who does that? He said, You. And I was like, I don't do that anymore. But you know, I don't do it. Because when I say good morning, Beacon Light, Beacon Light says good morning. They say I am thankful that God allowed me to have an opportunity to say good morning. They said in spite of all the mess I went through this week, they say good morning. They say even though people wrote me off a long time ago, they say good morning. Okay, now Beacon Light's getting tired. They say, even though I was sick last year, last week, yesterday, they say good morning. They say, even when no one knew that I had no food and someone knocked on that door and gave me food, we say good morning. In spite of the fact that people lost their job, people say good morning. In spite of the fact that we have still room in this church, Beacon Light says good morning. In spite of the fact that pastor had to work really hard to remind us that God's been faithful and we need to be faithful with our tithes and offerings, we say good morning. Do you all know that when I asked you good morning, I'm just literally giving us an opportunity because I want to hear us say good morning because when we say it, it's like we're just saying, Lord, I thank thank you for allowing me to walk in this church we are not doing beacon light no benefit it is all to god's glory that he allows us to come in the door so to those visiting i want to tell you all we are thankful and our good mornings and our smiles and our hugs are just a small indication of what god is doing before we have the welcome, and Pastor is going to join in just a moment to welcome the guests. But I was thinking today, does anybody know what today's whole focus is on? Does anybody know? If you know, just shout it out. You know what? We're always scared that we're going to get it wrong. One thing about God is if you get it wrong, he'll get it right for you. It's okay. The reality is today is about leadership we're gonna focus on leadership so I was trying to think Lord what is it that as leaders we need you know what we need as leaders you know what we need as leaders do you know what we need as leaders we need perseverance we need people that will stand the test of times that will endure no matter what when pastor when there's five people in here pastor preaches like it is standing room only that's perseverance when the choir looked like it was dying and the word on the street was beacon light was half dead we had a gentleman who said i will stand the test we had a, a gentleman who was leading out who said i will stand that's perseverance when we had more seats and sometimes we didn't know when we came in here bringing in the enemy because we were discouraged but yet God provided that somebody would come in the door and tell us I love you that's perseverance because we continue to come but as we turn around and we start watching him fill things up won't he do it every time so as leaders how many of you are leaders raise your hand you know there's a lot of hands that are not that are down and you know why because you don't realize that every single person in here is a leader and the problem with our society is because we don't know how we've been called we are leading people wrong we got parents how many are parents your leaders how many are teachers your leaders how many of you call yourself to people that don't know you evangelists your leaders 
How many of you are negative? Don't raise your hand. Just listen. You're leaders because you're leading people wrong. How many of you don't know what he called you for? Do you know you're a leader? Everybody that stands around you and says, I don't know what I'm doing either. They're following you. We are called to be leaders, but we've got to learn in order to be leaders. We got to know how to do it and to do it right. But a leader is one who perseveres. So this poem that I'm going to share today is, will you too, will you also go away? Will you too be the one who turns their back? Will you blame Jesus for the faith that you lack? Will you run away from the life and the way? Will you too be the one whom the world sways? Will you shut the door on the hope you found? Will you too no longer to your Savior be bound? Will you depart unbelieving and resentful? Will you too be the one who'll never be regretful? Will it be you? Will you too be the one who stops following the light of the sun? Will it be you? Will you too up and flee? Oh Lord, I pray, don't let this be me. We're leaders. We pray that God will give us standing, staying power to persevere the test of times. Today is on leadership, and when you walk out this door, may you be empowered, may you be strengthened to have had some ingredients to be better leaders than we walked in here to be. And at this time, we want to encourage those who are visiting with us, we want to encourage you to be leaders as well. We're going to invite Pastor to come over here and he is going to give a specific welcome to those who have chosen to come to this place that is entitled Beacon Light on a Hill, a place to serve, a place to belong, and a place to be transformed. Before Pastor does a special welcome, I do want to read something there is a 2020 community forum and panel community-wide community forum and panel it's a celebration of black boys amen it's confronting systems of oppression and lifting voices of triumph it will take place on monday january the 20th at 3 30 p.m when and what time 3.30 p.m. on Monday, January the 20th. And for those who don't know, Monday is a celebration of our history in honoring Dr. Martin Luther King, who persevered. It'll be at the Palestine Missionary Baptist Church, which is on 3619 East 35th Street. If you don't get that address, please see Pastor, see myself, I'll remind you. But the forum proceeds uh, the 6 p.m. Martin Luther King Mass Celebration. So everyone is invited. It'll be a hallelujah time. Come on out and may God bless you. Amen, amen. We want to welcome to the house today a special guest all the way from Houston, Texas. And we're going to ask Sister Shannon Coleman to stand. You are family. Come on and say amen. So we want to make sure she feels welcome in the house. Amen. It's so good to see your face in the place. Um, she is uh, driving for, is it UMKC? Can you just introduce the, yes, go ahead. Oh, Misa. Okay, wait. Houston, Missouri, Texas County. All right, I just got it all mixed up. Mixed up. Amen. Well, listen, Sister Coleman, the next time you come with the band, tell them they could come right over here to church, play a couple songs for them. It's a blessing to see you here today. And this is a special day for one of our faithful uh, members, Sister Myrna Boney. This is her birthday. And come on and say amen. She's 21 plus. Come on and say amen. That's my buddy. That's my buddy, Sister Myrna Bodie. And she is 
she was surprised this weekend because her daughter, Sister Melissa, came to visit her all the way from Florida. Would you stand? Amen. Amen. Listen, we appreciate your mother here. Don't take her anywhere. We appreciate her right here. These are the names that I have who visited with us today. I don't know if there are any other visitors in the house. If you just want to stand, if you're a visitor here today, we want to acknowledge you. If you're a visitor here today, all right, well, listen, this is the time. Oh, praise God. Come on and say amen. Stand. If you want to say something in a dizzy, we're, we're free today. So you <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So glad to see you. We're going to ask our praise team to come. We have a praise team that has fired us up, that has been here. Come on and say amen. It was ice last week, but it was hot inside. Amen. And so they're going to welcome us now, send our welcome song. And Beacon Light members, you know what to do. You know we are a friendly church, so we want you to get up. We want you to hug somebody. Make sure you hug our visitors too, all right? Because the first time they're visitors, the second time they're family, amen? Amen, so hug them, let them know that it's good to see their face in the place.
And this time we're going to have our children's story. And so we're going to ask our children, if you could come on up here, we have something special for you. And as our children make their way up, we want to remind, we have some of the sound room we need for them to come we have some over here some inside there want our children to come on come on come on come on in the sound room come on come on down and as they make their way up we want to remind you that we have our children's choir our children's choir is still up and running amen and so be on the lookout for the announcement when we're going to have our children's choir practice Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Oh, wow. We have a seat right there. Okay, so today I wanted to share a story with you. Actually, it's about me when I was a little girl. And I just want to tell you something that I did that I guess I regret. And I thought it wouldn't hurt to share because sometimes we don't share mistakes. And then when we don't share mistakes, people end up making the same mistakes because no one ever talked about the mistake that they made. So I want to tell you that one time, I think I was in third grade. Is anybody in third grade here? We got three people in third grade, okay. I was, okay, you can put your hand down. I was in third grade and I remember coming down and I was living in New York at the time. And I remember coming down the stairs at school walking in front of the office and I looked and I saw a boy sitting in the office and I said what's wrong with him because he looked kind of sick I said what's wrong with him and someone said he has the chicken pox does anybody know what the chicken pox is you have no clue you're right because you guys get vaccinated for that vaccination means you get a shot when you're a little baby, they give you a shot now so you don't get the chicken pox. But when I was a baby, they didn't have those shots yet. So I, well, I already gave that part away, but you'll hear this part real quick. So I saw the boy in that room sitting. So I'm standing here and I'm looking maybe three or four rows and I see a boy in the office. The window was open. And I looked and said, wow, he, he looked sick and he had some stuff on his face. Do we have a picture of what chicken pox looks like? Okay, that's what chicken pox looks like. It's all over your body, not just on your face. So I remember seeing that boy there and it must have been earlier during the week. But now, later on, I remember being at church and after church was over, I was downstairs and I remember saying, my back itches and I told my friend scratch my back so she was scratching my back over my clothes I said no scratch it some more oh it's itching it's itching oh, I don't know what's wrong I couldn't understand what was wrong with me I was feeling horrible and when I got home the next day I realized I had the chicken pox I had little red bumps all over my body all over my face and I was feeling miserable sometimes you can get a little fever you can feel sick you almost feel like you have a cold or the flu and you just lay in bed and you just feel miserable and I had to stay home because it was very contagious mind you I didn't even touch the boy I didn't even talk to him I just looked at him so the fact that I looked at him, and I guess the air that he was breathing was the same air I was breathing, somehow I got sick. It was amazing, and it was horrible, and I was miserable. And let me tell you what happens with chicken pox. You feel very itchy, right? And you feel really bad. And they put this um, liquid caladrill cream. It's, it's like a pinkish, orange-looking thing they put on your skin to help dry the bumps or the boils because they're filled with liquid water in it that's why you're not supposed to scratch because if you scratch you'll bust it and it'll be spreading even more so let me tell you what happened i'm gonna make try to make this long story short i was getting better and when you start getting better you feel good and i wanted to go to school but i still wasn't 100 percent okay to go but i was counting down the days because my class was going on a field trip they were going to go to the zoo and I wanted to go so bad. And the day was coming closer and closer and closer. My mom was saying, I think you can make it to school, but I don't know if you really should go. And I begged her, Mom, I want to go. We're going to the zoo. We're going to the zoo. She says, okay. 
But I looked in the mirror and I had all of these scabs. Have you ever got a cut before and your body is healing and you have that scab on it? My mom said, don't pick those scabs. If you pick those scabs, you'll have a scar. But I looked in the mirror and said, I can't go to school like this because I had them all over my face everywhere. And I didn't listen to my mom. I went to the bathroom, I looked in the mirror, and I started picking off all the little tiny scabs. But there was one scab that was a really big scab right on my face. I think it's on this side, I don't have a mirror. Do you see something on my face there? You see it? Do you see something on my face here? Do you see it? Well, that was a big one, and it was the ugliest. And I was like, I am not going to school like this. My mom told me, do not take it off. Did I listen? You know I didn't. I went in the bathroom and I peeled it off and it left a big hole in my face. But I was like, I'm going to the trip because I want to go to the zoo. The saddest thing happened. We went to school and the trip was canceled because of rain. It was pouring rain and we didn't even go to the zoo and I ended up with a scar on my face for the rest of my life because I was disobedient. But let me tell you, there's somebody who's going to have a scar for the rest of his life. But it wasn't because he was disobedient. It's because he was obedient to Jesus, to his father. And you see those scars in his hands? He's going to have those scars for the rest of his life. And when we get to heaven, we're going to see those scars. And he can tell you more about how he was obedient to his father. So I don't want you to have scars because you were disobedient to your parents like me. And I have to live with this for the rest of my life. Every time I look in the mirror, I think about how I disobeyed my mommy and how I didn't even get to go to the zoo. <laughs> but when I think about Jesus, I think about how he obeyed his father and went to the cross for us. And he will have this scar forever and ever and ever. And when I get to heaven, I'm not going to have this scar anymore because God's going to make me new. And I'm going to be beautiful with no scars on my face or on my body. But Jesus will continually always have those scars in his hands to remind us of how he was obedient. So if we're ever going to have scars, let's have scars because we are obedient, right? Just like Jesus was. Can we pray that God will help us to be obedient to our parents so we don't have scars of disobedience, but scars of obedience? And that can happen sometimes when you do what's right. Sometimes you might get in trouble for doing what's right, and that's okay. But don't get in trouble for doing what's wrong, right? Let's obey. So let's pray and thank God that we have parents who love us, and let's try to be obedient to, his, to their will and to God's will. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that although we make mistakes, you still forgive us if we just come to you and ask for forgiveness. I thank you that although I disobeyed my parents, you still love me and you forgave me. I thank you, Lord, for obeying your father and for going to the cross and dying for us. I pray that every boy and girl here will obey their mommy and daddy in the Lord. I know their mommies and daddies and grandmas and grandpas love you, Jesus. And I'm sure that whatever they instruct their children to do is because they love you and they love them. Help us to obey our parents, obey our grandparents, obey adults who love you, Jesus. We need to follow those who follow you. And then we pray that when you come back, you'll make us all new and we'll get to live with you forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, for your many, many blessings. Bless every boy and girl here and their mommy and daddy and every family represented. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. So we get to pick up the offering. All right. And remember to obey. Let's obey our parents in the Lord. Praise God for that children's story. Amen. 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 And this time we're going to go into our, our prayer session. And we're going to ask our young ones as they collect the offering.
Oh, these young children are precious, aren't they? And it's so good to know that you brought them to church. They could have been other places, but you brought them to church. And by the way, you see how they're collecting this offering? They're learning. We have future deacons in the place, amen? Future ushers, future pastors, because they're learning the gift of service, deaconesses. And as we just observe our children and what they're doing in the church, I know that it's our desire that they will stay in the church. Amen? Amen. Now, we know they have their own decision. And, but I don't know about you. If we just continue to pray for our children and have them remember what it was like being in church, the good moments, by the grace of God, that will bring them back to the house of God. We have several things to pray about this morning. Got word this week that one of our students from Mile High Academy tragically lost her life this week. And so our pastors from the Central States Conference in Rocky Mountain, they went there to minister to the school. She was a senior in high school. I can only imagine the pain that her parents feel because of this loss. And so we want to pray for that family in a special way. Will you commit to pray for that family? And not only that are we praying for, for that family, but we're praying for those that are here at Beacon Light who have lost loved ones. You may have lost a loved one in the last couple of weeks like Sister Dolores Jones or maybe in the last year or two years, we're praying for you that God will give you strength so that you can make it and understand that when Jesus comes, he'll wipe all the tears away. And so as our praise team leads us into this song of meditation, we're going to ask that you'll come to the altar if you have a burden on your heart, if you have something that you're going through. We ask that you just press to the altar just to be and we're going to mention your concern just before the God be that has a scar in his hand a scar that tells us that he loves us that he's there for us just come just to be close to you just to be close to you to be close to you is my desire. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my desire. Right before we pray, right before we pray, we want to remind you that we have a prayer box. Listen, we need to utilize this prayer box because when you put your request in this prayer, we are going to pray for your request. Because I just believe that when the people of God pray, something happens. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, Lord, we want to lift up some people in this circle right now before your altar. We want to lift up Sister Moore before your altar, dear God. We want to lift up the Brown family before your altar, dear Father. Lift up Kenny, dear God, before your altar today. And there are many others, Father, in this circle that want a special touch from on high. Father, we look at Romans chapter 8 and, Lord, we declare 
like the Apostle Paul, uh, that sometimes we don't even know how to pray. <laughs> but Father, we praise you for the Spirit that intercedes on our behalf. So Father, we come to you broken. We come to you, Father, with uh, with all of our issues. We come to you, Father, because we don't have it all worked out. But Lord, we come to you because you can work it out for us. We come to you, Father, because you can heal where man says it's impossible. Father, we come to you, Lord, because we need to have a good outlook now. Life has been so hard for some of us. It's been a struggle for some of us. And so, Father, we need to have a good outlook knowing that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Father, we come to you, God, because we want to have that hope, that hope that you're going to bring us through. No matter what the enemy throws at us, Father, you're going to bring us through because you are a God that delivers. And so, Father, we not only pray for this circle, God, but we lift up that the parents of the Mile High student, Lord, that was tragically uh, killed this week. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please stop by that house of affliction, dear Father. We ask for the comforter to go on in, Lord, and comfort that family, Father. We, we pray, dear God, for your grace and your mercy we pray God that they will know that they have a God that is with them a God that will see them through though they walk through the valley and shadow of death God you're with us we pray dear God for the spirituality of the church Lord we don't want to go through this life and pursue after things and pursue after resources and pursue after a bigger house or a bigger job we don't want to go through this life and that be the priority father what we want is the outpouring of your spirit so that we can think differently and walk differently and talk differently and father we want to be different transformed by your grace and the only way that can happen is by your spirit so breathe on us dear god father fill us with your spirit and when the spirit of god comes in the spirit of jealousy has to go when the Spirit of God comes in, the Spirit of covetousness has to go. When the Spirit of God comes in, our attitude will change. So Father, we pray for your Spirit. And lastly, before we end this prayer, God, we lift up the preacher today. Oh God, you have used him in times past. And Father, I ask God that you will again anoint him with your Spirit. So that when he speaks to us, it will be your words and not his. We thank you. Forgive us, God, for our sins. And help us to live differently because we know that God is a God that believes in transformation. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen. Turn this morning's time at offering. Before I get started, for the next Sabbath and going forward, I'll have a 
your 2019 contribution statements will be available. So see me or Cloretta or Siobhan if you want to get a copy of that. The Song of the Thunderstorm. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. Psalms 29 continues by comparing God's powerful voice to thunder. People sometimes call it the song of the thunderstorm. But in contrast, it concludes by saying the Lord blesses his people with peace. In these two introductory verses, however, the word give is repeated three times. The psalmist is giving praise to the creator, especially for the beauty of his holy character. Let us give glory to our powerful yet peaceful, peace-giving God, and he worship him with our tithes and offerings today. For the deacons rise. Yeah, I feel like blessing, blessing the Lord this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Y'all look a little bit too comfortable out there. I know y'all came to church to give God praise, amen? I know y'all know this song. We're going to ask y'all to help us sing it this morning. Here we go. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Come on, say bless the Lord. And bless the Lord with me. Hey. Bless the Lord with me.
that there may be meat in my house. If we be not here with said the Lord of hosts, if I not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. Our Father Heaven, thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day. Please be with us as we further your mission. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise and worship time. Amen. 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 That's a good little warm up for y'all. Amen. Yeah, Sometimes I look out y'all, y'all be like, don't bother. The looks on y'all face be like, don't bother me today. Don't bother me today. But here's the deal. You know, y'all say, oh, we just enjoy y'all so much and stuff. But we don't really sing for y'all compliments. I'm not trying to, you know, we don't, we, right now. we're here to worship God, amen, Hallelujah. and it's better when we all worship God together, yes. amen, praise and worship is supposed to be a communal thing, amen, amen, so we're going to ask y'all to help us this morning, is this all right, all right, come on y'all, let's do this, uh, what are we singing, <laughs> the weather's been bad, we ain't rehearsed for a couple of weeks, but God's good, amen, amen, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. If you really want the glory of the Lord here today, we want you to stand with us and sing. And it's a real simple song. It says, hey, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among us. Hey. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise, rise among us. Let the praise of our King let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise. Let the praise of our King let it rise. Let the praise of our King let it rise.
dances of the Lord. Let him rise. Let the praise him. Let him rise. I've been trying to spend a lot more time in the Word lately. It seems like the more hectic life gets, it's crazy how we run back to God's Word more than we normally do. Because we understand we're not where we need to be spiritually in God. And the other day, I was, I was watching YouTube, and, and uh, this guy just opened up the Bible and he started singing. I never saw anybody do that before. I, I never saw, stay right there, but I never saw anybody do that before, and it blew my mind. And he opened up to, I think it was Psalms 18, and he said, and he said, he said, I love you, oh Lord, my strength, I love you. Oh, Lord, my strength, I love you. Oh, Lord, my strength, I love you. Oh, Lord, my strength. Then he went on to read, he said, The Lord is my healer yes, he is. and my fortress. Yes, he my God, my deliverer, my God, my shield. He said again, he said, the Lord is my pillar and my fortress. My God, my deliverer, in whom I take refuge. 
say, wow. Yes. I love you. Yes, I love you. Oh, Lord, my strength. I love you. Oh, everything that God's delivered you from and how your life was a mess before God came and laid his hand on you.
my response is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. may not understand you have rescued my life but Jesus and declared never to whom back. much has been forgiven the same loveth much you have rescued my life you have rescued my you life you have rescued my life and I'm never and I'm never, never going back ought to say amen again in this place i wonder if i have somebody in here today who knows that it's the lord that has rescued your life and that's why you're alive today it's not any because of goodness in yourself it's not anything that you have done it's not because you are worthy but somebody in this place to this afternoon knows that god is worthy and because of his mercy and because of his grace and that is new every single morning because he loves you more than life itself because he came down from glory and came down to this world this dark world who who recognized that his creation would not bless him that his creation would not be excited but i thank god today that he was excited about me somebody ought to say amen that he was excited to come down if i were the only one in the earth realm if there was nobody on the earth but me he would have still left glory and came on down to the world and rescued me from my sin and rescued me from my trouble and rescued me from my mistakes and rescued me from myself and rescued you from drugs and rescued you from mental illness and rescued you from being messed up because 
He is a redeeming God and He is a delivering God and He is a saving God. And I just wonder if I have somebody in the church today who recognizes that it wasn't any goodness in yourself, but because He's been good to you. And I thank God that the song says, I'm not going back because He's rescued me. I'm not going back to sin. I'm I'm not going back to trouble. I'm, I'm not going back to the old stuff that I used to be. I've been created in Christ and I'm a new creation. You have rescued my life. at somebody and say I'm not going back I'm not going back I'm not going back he's changed me he's made me brand new he's fixed some things that 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 no doctor could fix and he's changed some things that no psychiatrist could change and he's dealt with some issues that that no medication could fix it for me but how many of you know that God will swoop right in in the nick of time and and when everybody else gives up on you I thank God today that God never gives up on you that he never will leave you alone that he'll never leave you the same way he found you he'll never leave you in the gutter he might find you in the gutter but I thank God today that I'm coming out of the gutter because he's been better to me than I've been to myself have rescued my life he has rescued our lives and because he has that's why we come to church and lift up holy hands that's that's why we brave the cold and and come out anyhow in spite of that's why we we come in this place because because we've come to give him worship because he's worthy of our worship he's worthy of our praise he's He's, if I had 10,000 tongues today, I'm here to tell somebody it would not be enough to give him honor and glory that is due his name. And so, so I just whisper the song that, that they sung that you have rescued my life. Yeah, yeah. And I thank you, God. And I worship you in this place because I know we'll never be the same. Put your hands together, Jesus Christ, and thank God for the praise team and our musicians on today. I thank God for you known your pastor pastor henry for a very long time we have been at oakwood together in the seminary uh we have uh, known their family my wife and i and our family have known their family uh for a long time and pastor henry i thank you so much for allowing me to come back and share life and ministry and word with your church on today good morning beacon light well, y'all are awake this morning. Praise the Lord in this place. Uh, uh, it's just always good to see you. I want to thank God for the Smiths and their hospitality, um, hanging out with them for a little bit. And uh, they have been, been more than hospitable. And I thank you so much. And I praise the Lord for you. And, and like the Bible says that Jesus said to his disciples, when you go into a home and they have treated you well, leave a blessing behind you. So I'm going to leave a blessing behind me. He said that when you go into the raggedy house and they, ain't, they do you wrong, he said shake the dust off your feet on them place because it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that house and so I thank the Lord that that they have been good to me I'm just so always delighted to be here uh, this is an awesome place to call home you guys get an incredible weekend coming up this weekend somebody ought to say amen don't come here and act like you don't carry your Bible like you too holy to know that that, 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 that the, the red and white and, and, and gold is, is going to be on the field on Sunday. Somebody ought to say amen. They didn't drive that bus here just for the band. They drive that bus here because they, they came to see something. Amen. And so, and so I, I, I bless you and keep you. I don't have a dog in this fight, so I, I can bless you today. Amen. <laughs> yes. And so I just I praise the Lord for you. 
I wish you well. I was in coming into the airport and, and, and the news cameras are there and they were interviewing uh, people who are coming in in Kansas City uh, gear and then they had some people who were brave enough, amen, uh, to come in in Titans gear and they, were, and they were interviewing everybody and asking them what they thought the outcome would be for the weekend and so, and so I, I know you're going to have fun and an awesome time uh, in Jesus Christ. I don't want to hold you at church all day. I know you've got some veggie loaf in the oven right now warming it up on 200 and so I just want to make sure I get you out of here uh, in a decent amount of time grab your Bibles with me if you do not mind let's turn to the book of 1st Samuel chapter 16 1st Samuel chapter 16 and I'm looking at verses 10 and onward I might read a little bit more scripture than I'm accustomed to but if you would just follow along with me in your word on today 1st Samuel chapter 16 and I'm reading verses 10. I'm reading from, I believe it is the new uh, international version of the Bible. And the Bible and the word of the Lord says this. It says this. And it says, um, uh, 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 Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said unto him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Somebody say, have mercy. Uh, uh, he wanted to know, this something is wrong with this picture. Are these all the sons that you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send him, for we will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. Have mercy. And his is the one. Uh, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And then Samuel went to Ramah. Verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Saul's attendant said unto him, See, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp. He will play when the evil spirit from God comes upon you, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. Verse 18, one of the servants. him he had a lot of gifts somebody say praise the Lord <laughs> then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said send me your son David who is with the sheep so Jesse took a donkey laden with bread a skin of wine and the young goat and sent with his son David to Saul verse 21 David came to Saul and entered his service Saul liked him very much and David became one of his armor bearers then Saul sent word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Here's where I want to lay my hat today. Verse 23. Whenever the Spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. Then relief would come to Saul. He would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. Have mercy. Uh, for just a few moments, I want to speak to you from the message entitled, Activate My Anointing. Activate my anointing. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today that we sense that your presence is in this place. Father, we know, Lord, that you are an awesome God, mighty to save and mighty to deliver and mighty to heal, Lord. We thank you that you have not allowed the devil to kill us on this past week. But, Father, we have come into your house one more time 
to talk about how good you are to us. Now, Father, I pray today that you would allow the written word to become the spoken word, that the spoken word would become the living word, and that the living word would change our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let some saint of God say amen and amen. Uh, uh, one of the things I am coming to understand more and more is that the anointing of the Lord is more important than where you went to school. <laughs> The anointing of the Lord is more important than who you know or how much money you have or who your parents are or whether or not people like you or not or what your job description is, whether you're tall or short, uh, large or small, black or white, uh, Asian or Hispanic, uh, a citizen or on a green card, the anointing of the Lord trumps everything. In fact, you can be broke in a one-room shack with no degree, managing sheep on the backside of the desert, but if you're anointed, you don't have to discover yourself. God will take notice of you. When you're anointed, you can marry a knucklehead and still be blessed. Uh, uh, when you're anointed, you can have a deadbeat parent and still be blessed. Uh, uh, when you're anointed, you can work in a hostile environment and still have favor. Uh, when you're anointed, uh, you can be around negative people and still stay positive. Uh, uh, when you're anointed on, you can get lied on and still get the promotion. Uh, when you're anointed, they can talk about you like a junkyard dog. Uh, but the more they talk about you the more blessed you become uh, uh, when you're anointed you can get laid off the job and still feel the key the kids um, when you're anointed your tires last twice as long somebody ought to say amen uh, when you're anointed your 98 hoopty looks better than their 2020 special uh, I'm just talking to somebody who's anointed in this place today uh, when you're anointed uh, you can have a 2.8 8 GPA um, and it takes you farther than their 4.0 uh, uh, when you're anointed uh, you can rock a moat uh, and looks better than their coach uh, when you're anointed a thousand will fall at your side and ten thousand will bell at your right hand uh, but nothing will come nigh you uh, when you're anointed no weapon that is formed against you uh, shall be able to prosper uh, when you're anointed he makes your enemies your footsteps stool uh, when he anointed what would have killed them uh, only elevates you uh, when you're anointed you can take a licking and keep on ticking baby i'm talking about anointed people in this house today I came to tell somebody today uh, the anointing is everything. Uh, without the anointing, uh, little things get you frustrated. Can I just talk to about two married people? Uh, uh, you see, the problem is uh, it is not that he or she ain't the right one. Uh, the problem is they ain't got enough anointing to deal with you. Uh, you see, when you got real anointed people, uh, they let stuff slide off their back. Uh, uh, that you can say something under your breath, and they just keep on walking. Uh, uh, that you can, oh, you can, uh, uh, you can rub them the wrong way, and they don't let it affect them because they recognize that they don't catch every ball, and they don't run after every dog. Because when you're really anointed, you. And the question may be, somebody is sitting there and say, Pastor, then, uh, what is the anointing and how do I get it? <laughs> he said, I like this anointing that you're talking about. I, I want to know where it is and I want to know how I can procure this for myself. Uh, can I tell you what the anointing is not? Huh. The anointing is not being slain. It's not goose pimples. It's, it's not a feeling. Feelings can be associated with the anointing, but feelings or the absence thereof is not the anointing. Huh. The anointing is not hick him on the shunda, kick him in the side. Huh. The anointing is not doctrine. The Pharisees had doctrine, but they had no anointing. 
I could, I could preach a sermon on that all day right there. I could just put my hat right there. You see, sometimes uh, people think that if you have information, uh, information is equivalent with anointing. But I know some people who got a bread, a head full of knowledge, but they ain't got no common sense. Uh, I know some people who got money in the bank, uh, but they don't know what to do with it. Uh, uh, you see, the anointing is not just church going. Uh, uh, Judas went to church, but he had no one. When you're really anointed, it means that you are set apart to do something that nobody else in the atmosphere can do. Can I just speak a little bit? That's why you got to be careful who you take advice from. Everybody can't give you advice because you're not anointed to do what I'm anointed to do. You can't take it. Uh, people come to you and say, listen, if I was married to Willie, I wouldn't take all of that. You see, you ain't married to Willie because you ain't anointed to be... I'm anointed for this. Uh, I'm anointed to do what I do. I'm anointed to go where I go. I'm anointed to have the kids. That's why you can't let Oprah be your only uh, source of advice because Oprah ain't even anointed to do what you do. Uh, anointing has a lot to do with faith. The Bible says to each man or woman is given a measure of faith. Uh, anointing means being set apart for a special task. And I'm just uh, crazy enough to believe that everybody born on this planet is born with a special task given to them by their creator. You are anointed to do some things in the atmosphere that nobody else in this house can do. Don't confuse. Hear me, somebody. Don't confuse your anointing uh, or your calling with your job. Can I just speak it to some people? Uh, for many of you, your job is just a vehicle that pays your bills while you operate in your anointing. Have mercy. Uh, what are you talking about, Pastor? Uh, uh, here's what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, Jesus was a carpenter, but he was anointed to save the world from their sins. Uh, he didn't let his job get mixed up with his anointing. Uh, sometimes you just have a job so that you can pay the bills, uh, but I'm anointed to change my neighborhood. Uh, I'm anointed to change my church. Uh, I'm anointed to change my marriage. Uh, I'm anointed to change my family uh, your job is what you do uh, the anointing is who you are and you may ask pastor if I'm so anointed then why am I having so much difficulty in my life I'm glad you asked I'm glad you asked the problem is not the anointing God knows what he wants you to do and God has equipped you for the task before you were even born. He placed gifts inside of you to accomplish what he has anointed you to do. In fact, the anointing is resident inside of you, given to you by God. The problem that is this, uh, many of us have the anointing, but we have not activated it. Uh, how do I explain it? Let me let me explain it like this. Back in the early uh, 80s and into the 90s, there was a particular hairstyle within the black community that had taken uh, a flight. Uh, you follow with me for just a moment. Uh, uh, in this particular hairstyle, uh, uh, many of us, uh, don't raise your hands now, <laughs> uh, but many of us uh, uh, went on to procure this particular hairstyle. Uh, in this particular hairstyle, uh, uh, you, 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 they called it uh, the Jerry Curl. <laughs> Can I just, just follow with me for just a moment? Uh, uh, you, you remember the Jerry Curl? <laughs> uh, you remember remember uh, uh, you had to wear a bag on your head because if you didn't uh, it would tear up your pillow uh, uh, you put pla that's why we put plastic on some of our couches uh, uh, because if you had somebody with the jerry curl uh, come and lean back on your stuff uh, it would tear it up uh, uh, because it was a different kind of hairstyle it it was new to the black community uh, 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 and and you could always tell when somebody had gotten a jerry curl they they would flash their hair around like they was something else because uh, they had now curls where before they had naps. 
Uh, I remember I, I, I grew up in the hood and I remember uh, uh, it, it was about 10 of us, my cousins and my brothers and sisters. My cousin lived across the street and, and one day, I don't know what possessed him, he went out and got a jerry curl. And for the first week or so, uh, he was in the jerry curl, and 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 he 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 went everywhere he wanted to be seen. Uh, 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 he was in his little element. He had his jerry curl, and he thought he was the stuff, and and he thought he was uh, uh, he thought he was too much. And uh, but but after a little while, uh, he came running over to the house. He had a hat on, and he was asking, "Did I have any extra money?" I'm going somewhere on this morning. Uh, I'm going to turn that page, uh, Pastor, in just a moment. Uh, 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 he came over and he began to say, listen, I need some money. Uh, and, and I said, what's up? Why do you need some money? And, and it was strange because just a week or so ago, he was flashing around his jerry curl uh, and acting like he was a prima donna. But now he had a hat on his head uh, and he was asking us for some extra money. Uh, uh, and so we we all caught him uh, uh, Pulled him, hold him down, uh, ripped the hat off of his head, uh, and out jumped a poodle that was sitting on his hand uh, where the jerry curl had once stood. Because you see, there was something about the jerry curl that you had to have in order to make it work. You did. Yes, you did. I wish I had time to had gone to the to the hair care store and had gotten one of those gold and red bottles. Uh, I wish I had time uh, to get some cream of nature. Uh, I wish I had time. Uh, you see, the jerry curl uh, only worked if you had the curl active. Somebody knows where I'm going on this morning. Uh, uh, the problem wasn't the jerry curl. The problem was that he had run out of activate. problem is not the anointing the problem is is if you have the anointing but you never activate it the anointing is there for you but it lies dormant until you walk in what God has for you look at my text for this morning the bible says that 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 it says that uh, uh that the, the bible says that an evil spirit verse 14 now the spirit of the lord had departed from saul and an evil spirit from the lord had tormented him saul's attendant said unto him see an evil spirit from god is tormenting you let our lord command his servants here to search for someone who can play the harp he will play when the evil spirit from god comes upon you and you will feel better. Oh, I want to give you a few points about activating your anointing and then I'm going to get out of your way. This, this is not even one of my points, but it's too rich not to mention it. Uh, your anointing, uh, hear me somebody, your anointing is post dated sometimes. Where are you going? Let me, let me just look at verse 13 for just a moment in this particular text. Verse 13 says, So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointing, anointed him in the presence, that being David, in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And then uh, Samuel went back to Ramah. Uh, 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 David is anointed to be king anywhere, scholars believe, between ages 12 and 16. I want you to follow me. That's why when Samuel came to Jesse's house, they didn't even call for David because they said, listen, uh, uh, we'll call for the sons that we believe are of age to be anointed to be king of Israel. And so he calls his seven sons. Uh, and the Bible says that he had some stately sons, sons that stood head and shoulders. He had nice looking sons. Uh, and, and the Bible says that Samuel comes to Jesse's home and, and he looks at each of the seven sons uh, and when he finished looking at them he said wait a minute something is wrong uh, uh, the Lord has not anointed any of these 
and he goes back to Jesse. He says, wait a minute, Jesse. Are these here all of your son? And Jesse has to say, no, no, yeah. Wait a minute. There is one more boy, but he's so young, he can't count. He's tending the sheep. And Samuel the prophet says, listen, we will not sit down until you bring the boy here. I wish I, I wish I had time to to just to, to just talk a little bit because sometimes you got to be careful when you and I deduce who God can and cannot use. Uh, we deduce it by gender. Have mercy. Uh, in our church, uh, uh, you can be ordained, but you can't be ordained. Uh, the last time I checked, God is God all by himself. And if he chooses to ordain a donkey, he'll ordain a donkey to speak on his behalf. And if he chooses to ordain a woman to speak for him, no devil in hell can shut her up. I'm talking about God being God. The Bible says that, that, that he calls for, he says, listen, uh, uh, send your son. And, and it says when David came in, uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, this David, he had a lot of gifts. It says he was good looking. Uh, he was a man of war. Uh, it said he was handsome. Uh, he was stately. And when he came in the room, uh, 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 Samuel arose and said, this is the one. We're going to anoint him. Here's, here's what I want to count body to catch. He's anointed to be king between ages of 12 and 16. He is not crowned king until age 30. What do you do when you've been anointed for something, but you can't yet walk in it? You've been anointed for it. The oil has flowed. The spirit has fallen. But you've got to wait almost 50 or so years to walk in what God has anointed you in years some of you the problem is is that you're too impatient to let the anointing develop in your life you want it now you wanted it yesterday God I want you to do this for me and I can't wait any longer God says wait a minute I've anointed you for it but sometimes when God anoints you for something he's got to prepare you for what you're going to walk uh, David knew nothing about pa uh, palace protocol he, no he knew nothing about running a kingdom he knew nothing about a job was created for him uh, so that he could learn uh, on the side what God was going to be having him do in the future uh, sometimes you've got to wait on the Lord uh, be of good courage uh, and know that in the end he will strengthen your heart so, can I just preach to about two people out here today uh, you've been anointed to be married but you haven't yet found that special somebody don't give up because it hasn't materialized uh, you've got to understand I've got to be patient because God will bring it to pass some of us are so impatient with God we want to know what he's going to do now but the truth be told, if God told you everything he was going to do with you, for some of you, it would blow your mind. You couldn't handle it. You couldn't deal with it. You couldn't take it. Uh, 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 the Bible says, uh, uh, that, that, that the word says, can you handle the stage where nothing is happening, but you've been anointed? Here's the first point I want to I want to bring to your attention. The first point I want to bring to your attention is this. Uh, the anointing gets activated in trouble. Look at the text. The Bible says that 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 the that that the anointing of the Lord falls upon David when an evil spirit comes over Saul. For most of y'all, y'all would have quit right there. Tell the truth. Uh, bring. Hello. David's residence. Hey, David. Uh, the king got the devil. We need you to grab your harp and come on in the work. Most of y'all been like, oh, he do? You hung the phone up. Uh, I quit. Because I'm tired of working with devils.
it's quiet up in here ain't it it's quiet up in here but but here's reality the anointing activates itself in trouble and for so many of y'all, y'all can't even walk in the anointing because the moment that the anointing is required of you, you pray to God, God, get me out of this God forsaken job. I can't take it in here. They driving me crazy up in here. Uh, they, oh, I can't stand these people. They so trifling. Uh, you're anointed for that. Uh, uh, that's what you're anointed. Oh, I can't stand that church. Uh, they drive me crazy. Everybody up in there got a devil. That's why you're there. You're there to change the atmosphere. You're anointed for trouble not to come out of Lord use me indeed enlarge my territory just don't let me have to deal with no devils just don't let me have to deal with no crooked folk don't let me have to deal with nothing funny don't let me go through nothing Lord let every be sunny days uh, and no clouds uh, let me have all beautiful and no rain uh, God says and what I need you for you're anointed to change a messed up world and the only way you can do that is you gotta walk in the trouble and tell the devil I'm here uh, you shouldn't have come in today uh, because I got my harp and I'm going to pick it in the fifth gear uh, and I'm going to play this devil up out the house. Half of y'all can't be anointed. The moment trouble hits, you on the phone. You a girl. Guess what they doing over there? Oh, Lord, have mercy. I don't know why. I don't know why I go to church there. Oh, because they so messed up over there. Oh, Lord, this job is the, it's the worst job I ever. Lord, you go to the prayer meeting. Could y'all pray for me to get a new job? I can't stand this job I'm at. Pray for me that Lord deliver me up out of here. God says maybe I've sent you there to deliver the atmosphere as opposed to you succumbing to the city. Lord, get me out of this marriage. Lord, get me out of this family. God said, I've switched you in that family to change it. You're anointed for this. But you're not activating the anointing because you're letting all the little trouble. What had happened if David had walked into that situation and said, boy, this is a tough place to work. I don't know if I can work here much longer. Boy, oh, Lord, he in there. What would have happened if David had walked in there complaining and complaining and crying and belly aching? Oh, Lord, I don't know why y'all put me in this job. I don't know. How can I get a different position? Can y'all transfer me out of this section? I don't want to be here. Uh, this is a terrible place. He would have deactivated his anointing because he would have been speaking defeat when he needed to speak courage and faith and strength. Oh. The anointing activates itself in trouble and for trouble. I used to, when I was at the seminary, I used to work in the juvenile center. And at the juvenile center, I used to work with these kids who were troubled kids who were all in there for crimes that they had committed and they were trying to rehabilitate these kids. And, and, and at the juvenile center, they used to call everybody by their last name, Mr. Royce or Mrs. Smith and Mr. Jones and Mr. Thomas. And they would call you and tell, but, but they knew that I was preparing for ministry uh, uh, at the seminary down the road and I was there. And so they knew that I was a, a pastor in training. And I, I remember coming in to work one night uh, and, and, and instead of calling me Mr. Royce and uh, uh, they, 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 the moment I saw him, they say, hey, Pastor Royce, it's good to see you tonight. I said, well, something is driven. Pastor Royce, they always call me uh, uh, Mr. Royce. What's going on? And they said, Pastor Royce, we got a special assignment for you. I'm saying, Pastor Royce, what's, what's happening right here? They said, here's the deal, Pastor Royce. Uh, we got one of the kids, uh, and they are seeing demons everywhere, and we want to give you a special assignment. We want you to sit with that boy <laughs> until the morning uh, uh, to make sure it goes well in this place. I said, well, wait a minute. Uh, what if I had not prayed? this morning uh, uh, what if I was like so many people in the church today I'd say well I quit I can't work with no devils I can't but I, I thank God I had prayed before I came to work uh, and when I sat down with the boy I became to plead the blood of Jesus over his life and I anointed him with oil because you know sometimes uh, you gotta walk with your oil and 
by the time it hit one o'clock I came in at eleven by one o'clock the boy was sound asleep uh, and he wasn't seeing no more devils uh, because greater is he that is in you uh, than great and he that is in this wicked world the anointing activates itself in trouble problems hear me somebody hear me somebody problems are job security for people who are anointed and their anointing is activated let me say that one more time problems are job security for people who are anointed and their anointing is activated you see because there is a problem David got a job Remember, he had just been anointed to be king of all Israel. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it just seems to be that Saul gets an evil spirit. The devil is a lie. God was preparing a job for David that fit his gift. Read the text. Read the text. What does the text say? What does the text say? The text says that, that Saul had an evil spirit. Notice what it says immediately after that. His servants, the servants of Saul, said, here's what we think the remedy is. He said, let us find somebody who can play a harp. Let us bring him in here. When he plays the harp, the, the, you will be well and the evil spirit will leave. Here's the interesting part. That it just so happened that David knew how to play the harp. So a job was created for David because somebody else had a problem. All of y'all running for problems. You end up running from your own blessing. Running from what God has for you. Running from the situation. Oh, I can't be there. Oh, I can't deal with this. I can't work in this. He said, listen, I created this just for you. The Bible says that an evil spirit from the Lord had come upon Saul. God let the evil spirit torment Saul so that he could create a position for David because he was going to give him the house that he was working. Some of y'all would have quit, forfeited your 401k, gave up your benefits, and lost out on the anointing that God had for you. Here's my next point. You have to be dressed for the anointing to be activated in your life. There's not a problem working with devils if you're dressed for the job. You can work with anthrax if you're dressed for it. Uh, you can work with nuclear isotopes if you're dressed for it. Uh, uh, you can work with swine flu if you're dressed for it. Uh, you can work with asbestos if you're dressed for it. You can work with devils if you've got the full armor of God on you and you're dressed for the job at hand. Uh, uh, you can work with anything if you're dressed for it. Uh, but here's what you cannot do. You cannot speak negativity and defeat and still walk in the anointing that God God has for you here's what I challenge couples here's here's what I challenge I do a lot of counseling I challenge couples because sometimes the worst problem is that you in your own marriage here's what ends up happening in your marriage you start you you can get into a rut in your relationship where you only talk about stuff that's negative oh Lord it's quiet in you I know y'all can't say amen I'll say amen for you amen be careful. You get into your marriage, and here's what can happen. You can only see all the problems and all the situation that's negative, and you just start talking negativity, and you don't realize that negativity begin to absorb into your whole personality. That negativity gets into your subconscious because the only thing that you're looking at is what's going wrong. What they doing. What the Joneses ain't doing. What the Mac McCarthy's ain't doing. What the, what the Smiths ain't doing right. And what this person ain't doing right. And before you know it, all you're talking about in your relationship is negative stuff that's happening, and you begin to deactivate the power of God in your life because negativity and faith don't mix if 
Bible says, and quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just say nothing at all. One of the things that my wife and I do, we try to do this uh, uh, sometimes, most times before we go to bed. We try to say, listen, what was three things about your day that you enjoyed? Because we're just trying to make sure we break the cycle of negativity in our relationship. That we don't go to bed talking about everything that's messed up, everything that's jacked up, and everything that ain't working. What are the three things you enjoyed about your day? What are three things you really liked? What are three things you're thanking God that he did for you today so that we end the day on a note of realizing that we're blessed and highly favored, that we're the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath, uh, that God be for us. Uh, and if God be for us, he is more than the world could ever be against us. Here's my next point. When you're anointed, God gives you favor. Uh, David had not played for Saul, yet uh, he just looked at him and hired him. The Bible says as soon as David came in the room, he said he liked him and he gave him a position. When God's hand is upon you, you have favor and you end up places. You don't have no credentials to be there. You got no business being there. You don't know nobody in there. But when you have favor from God, you don't have to take notice of yourself. God will take take notice of you let the anointing work for you stop trying to manufacture the anointing uh, uh, don't let the environment of the place that you work get inside of you you have to be spiritually vaccinated if you will not let the environment get the best of you and how do you get vaccinated preacher you get into his word uh, you spend time in worship uh, uh, you spend time in prayer that's how you vaccinate yourself against negativity is that when you get with God the positive author of the world uh, then God begins to inoculate you against the troubles of this age. Here's, here's probably one of the most difficult parts for so, so many people that, that, that here's where most of us fail with allowing our anointing to be activated and working for us. Here, I want you to hear me. Uh, here's, here's what some of us have to do. Here's what some of you have to do. Hear me. This is a point that some of you have come to church just for this, that God needs you to capture this. In order for your anointing to be activated, you've got to increase your capacity to work with difficult people. Let me say it one more time. The problem is, is that some of you cannot walk in the anointing that God has for you is because you have to increase your capacity to work with difficult people. David did not let that difficult situation push him out of the blessing that God was creating for him. Some of you cannot walk in the anointing that God has for you because you let your inability to work with difficult people crush your ability to do well. Some of you need to come out to my training on this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Is it at Linwood? Linwood, because I'm going to be talking about how to increase your capacity to work with difficult people. Because some of you, the moment that you deal with difficulty, you end up either running or turning and quitting or freezing. God has sent us into this broken world and if you're going to be used by God you have got to have the ability to work with difficult people because difficult people is the territory of which God has called us to change if every time God sends difficult people in our orbit we cry about it and we run from it then we can be no better than any other entity in this world but God has called us to change the world not be conformed to the world and I've got to rub shoulders with difficult people because my anointing trumps the difficulty in them Yes, it is. You better believe it. I pastored one church where I had a drug dealer at the church. Just on your point right there, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the godly. And he was trying to change his life. And, but, but, but this particular drug dealer, he was trying to change his life. I was doing Bible studies with him. I was praying for him and ministering to him. And, but every, every couple months... He would call me up and say, Pastor, can we go to the coffee shop? I need to sit down and talk to you. And he said, also, I need to pay my tithes and offerings. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And he would bring his tithes and offerings, about $50,000 in a brown paper bag. Smelt like weed. Yeah, it did. And, 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 and uh, for, for, for a moment, I was like, Lord, I cannot take this money. And then that scripture text came to mind. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the godly. I used that money to turn around so many lives, send so many kids to school, send people into ministry school, turn people's lives around, bought computers for kids who didn't have computers in the community, turn lives. Every three months, he said, let's go to the coffee shop. I said, I'm right there. He would get to the coffee shop. I would be waiting for him right there at the coffee shop. And he always had that little brown bag. I would say, well, thank you so much, Sheila. We're going to put this into the treasury of the church. But, but, but if I was high as falutin and I was a ditty and I couldn't think I couldn't be around a, 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 a people who were a work in progress and I couldn't be around difficult people in difficult situations, uh, then God could not have used me to, to now that young man has left the drug trade and he now has a profession uh, and he is a deacon in his church uh, because I didn't think of myself better than him uh, uh, to meet with him where he was uh, to allow God to take him to where he wanted him if I said I don't want your money and God don't want your money either then he probably would have taken that money somewhere else and his life would have probably never changed uh, but I recognize that I have got to always recognize that if I'm anointed to be around broken people let me give you another story. I was, I, I like to play golf. And I, uh, uh, when I used to pastor in California, I used to play golf at the golf course. And, and I would leave after, uh, or at the church office. I would go there and I would usually walk about nine holes after working. And, and I remember one day, and I usually like to go there by myself and play by myself. But on this particular day, they had put two individuals with me. Um, um, and, and these two young men, they were, they were not African-American and two uh, white guys, uh, young guys. They had put them with me and I, I quickly made their acquaintance and we were playing golf uh, uh, and I noticed very quickly that while we were playing golf uh, they were drinking and they were smoking uh, uh, you know uh, not one CBD <laughs> uh, it was uh, it was the other one it was weed <laughs> uh, they were smoking uh, and they were very hospitable gentlemen uh, because even in their situation uh, they offered me uh, to have some uh, I told them quickly I said listen uh, I'm having a hard enough time keeping this ball straight without that <laughs> if I get that I'll never find my ball again <laughs> um, uh, 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 but we kept on talking uh, and we kept on hanging out I was hanging out with these two young guys and I'm playing golf with them having a good time uh, because I recognize uh, that if I hide my light in a bushel or up under bed uh, it'll never light a bro playing with these guys I'm playing with these guys and they ask me what do you do I usually don't like to tell people what I do when I'm on the golf course because the moment I tell them I'm a pastor they start, they start quoting scriptures they start, they start, I'm just there to decompress. I've been, I've been dealing with crazy people all day. I just, I just want to be, I just want to be anonymous. I just want to be, I don't want to preach. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't even want to pray for you. I just want to, I just want to play golf. Can I just tell the truth? Sometimes we don't want to be pastors. I just, sometimes I, I tell my wife every year, I say, I don't want to quit. I want to be a truck driver. Why you want to be a truck driver? Because can't nobody mess with you when you're on the road. It's just you in the road. I, if I'm a truck driver, no members can call me. I just, it's just me in the road. Smokey, Smokey, one nine. We got a five old down the road. I'm, I'm, I'm playing golf with these two guys. And something tell me, tells them, tell them what you actually do. I said, I'm a pastor. The moment I said I'm a pastor, I could see they was, they was throwing the beer out. They was, they, 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 the other guy was smoking. And the other guy was like, I told one guy, he's like, don't throw the, throw the thing away. The guy's a pastor. <laughs> throw, the, throw the spliff away kept talking to these guys I'm talking to them and, and I, as I'm talking to them they said, Man, I'm a pastor and so now they're now they're quoting scripture they're talking about the goodness of the Lord and I'm walking around with them I said okay okay that's nice that's good I'm glad you know scripture that's good I'm glad because you know our president he don't even know scripture <laughs> he was on the news the other day they asked him to quote scripture he said well I know it I just can't I know he said two Corinthians and when he said two Corinthians I said I know he don't know scripture because don't nobody who know Chris scripture say 2 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. <laughs> so, so, I'm playing with these two guys. And they asked me, so what, what kind of 
what kind of pastor are you? Because And so, you know, I don't even like to tell people I'm Adventist sometimes because, you know, y'all don't behave. Y'all don't give us a good light sometimes. I'm like, oh, Lord. But I said, I'm a seventh Adventist pastor. And they, you thought they saw a ghost. It ended up coming out that these two young guys were Seventh-day Adventist kids. One of them's dad was a pastor who died. I could, in my mind, I could sing to myself, this kid's prayers of his dead father were ringing in the ears of God that would send me to meet them on a golf court. I found out that he was pretty gifted at singing. And I said, why don't you come to my, next, my, my church next week and, and do the special music for me? Wait a minute, Pastor. Didn't you just tell us that the guy was smoking weed? At the, at the golf course? Yeah, because one thing I recognize about changing lives, unless I get him in the presence of God, there's nothing else on this planet that can change them. It's him and his cousin. He came, sang, and this kid now is preparing for ministry at Canadian Union College, and his cousin is building wells in Africa, has been there for the last five years. Had I acted like I can't deal with broken people, I can't change any. Let that be a lesson to you, highfalutin Seventh-day Adventists who think you are designed to walk among people who are not broken. Your job is to be around broken people because light must shine in the darkness and salt must salt, unsalt it. Here's my last point. I don't know if the musicians are in the building or if they've already left because they got their check. Oh, you don't do that, praise the Lord. Yeah. Not you, not you, not you. Praise the Lord. I thank God they got you over here. Praise the Lord. Oh, you ain't getting no check. Well, that's, that's bad on y'all. Y'all need to give them something. Amen. Y'all ain't giving them nothing. In this, oh, you getting them something? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, you ain't here talking about bad stuff. Somebody ain't getting no check. Yeah, you playing from his heart, but y'all still need the blessing. The Bible said don't muzzle the ox or that tread out the corn. Or That's what the Bible say, don't it? That's what the Bible say. And you ought to know, can I just be honest? You ought to know that the people who ministered before the Lord musically were paid out of the tithe in the Old Testament. Go read your Bible. God sent me here to challenge your thinking. Because oftentimes, sometimes what happens is that our thinking only operates in our little bubble. And we think we know everything about everything. God says, no, you don't. I brought you here to be light and salt to a broken, dying world. But if you can't minister to the world that I brought you here to be lot and sight, salt and light too, then what good are you? If you go live out in the country and no one can hear that light and see that light and hear and taste that salt. If you disconnect yourself from broken people and the world, what good are you to me? But here's the last thing, how you, how you activate your anointing. See, our anointing gets activated when you encourage the presence of God. What David's brothers didn't understand about David, because they thought he was just out there tending sheep. What they didn't understand about David is that when David was out there tending sheep, what you ought to know why God chose him is that he was out there writing God poetry. 
He was writing God love songs. He was saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies, even my foes, came to eat of my flesh, they stumble and fell. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. God said, if I choose anybody, I'm going to choose him. He was out there in the wilderness saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters uh, he restored my soul yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with God said if I choose anybody I'm going to choose that boy because he knows how to get in my presence uh, and if you can get in God's presence uh, you can change any atmosphere I don't know who you are in this place today. I got a simple three-part appeal. Three parts of my appeal. There's somebody in this church this morning, this afternoon, somebody has deactivated your anointing by speaking defeat. And God wants to reactivate you. I don't know who you are, but I want that person. To, I, want, I want to say all my parts of my appeal, and then I want you to stand. Here's the first one. You've deactivated your anointing by speaking defeat, but God wants to reactivate you. Here's point number two. Some people are not sure if they ever been anointed in their lives you're not sure you have purpose you're not sure why you exist but today you believe that God has you here for a purpose and a reason I'm gonna ask you to stand in a moment and then there's finally somebody who I need more than anointing I need salvation I need to know that I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and through his grace alone if you are in one of those three categories I just want you to stand to your feet you need your anointing reactivated uh, you need to know that God has a purpose over your life and finally you might be somebody who's saying preacher I need to make sure that Jesus Christ is number one in my life you're saying I want to be filled with his Holy Spirit I don't just want to take up space I want to change the space around me I want people to know that I'm a child of the living God. And my anointing is so powerful that, 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 that demons can leave the room because I'm there. That God is using me with such might and such authority that I change the atmosphere on my job. That I change the atmosphere in my home. I change the atmosphere of my family. That, that I shift things. When I walk into a place, demons take notice that uh, Yolanda is in the building. And I've got to recognize that her anointing trumps anything that I can do. I believe God wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to do a new thing in this church at, at Beacon Light. He wants to change your life. I don't know if there's somebody who's standing because you're saying, you know what? I need, I need to join. I need to join the church of Jesus Christ. I need to make sure that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I need to make sure that my calling and election is sure. I believe God's been speaking to you. I don't know who you are, but if you know that you need to join a church, you need to be baptized, you need God to turn your life inside out and upside down, I want you to step out of your chair and come down here. Give me your hand and give Jesus Christ your heart. I don't know who you are. You might be visiting today. You might be a guest. So you might have been coming to this church for a while, but but you've never taken the next step with Jesus Christ but today you're saying I want my anointing to be activated and I want to take the next step with Jesus Christ come on down huh? I'm not going to hold this appeal open very long, but I don't want to, 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 to presume that there's not someone here who wants to make sure that their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you're here today and God wants to speak to you, I want you to just come on down. Who are you? Who is God speaking to today? I believe you're in the building and I believe God wants to do a supernatural thing in you and through you. He wants to turn the anointing in your life on full blast and set demons to flight and and change atmospheres and turn things around i don't know who you are but i believe god's been speaking to you for months and months and months and he's finally gotten you to church today and he's saying i'm talking to you i don't know who you are but i'm just gonna hold this appeal open for 30 more seconds 
you're saying, Pastor, it's me you're talking to. I've gotten away from God. I've been living life my own way, and I've been doing things my own way. But today I hear, today I hear his voice. And I'm not going to harden my heart. I surrender my will to him. I surrender my life to him. I surrender my future to him. I leave my past in his care. And I accept his cleansing blood, and I accept his life as if it were my own. I don't know who you are, but you may be here today and you want to come on down. I just want to invite you right now to make your, just, just step out of your chair and just say, Pastor, it's, it's me standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Let not this be the day that stands against you in judgment. Where you say, God, when did you invite me into relationship with you? He will say, January 18, 2020. That pastor from Florida stood and made the appeal and you felt the tinge in your heart. But you hardened your heart. And that's the day I was calling you. I don't know who you are, but I just, I don't want to leave here. And you don't have an opportunity to make your calling and election sure with Jesus Christ. We're praying. Father, I thank you today. I thank you, Lord, that the flower may fade and the grass may truly wither away, but that the word of the living God stands immutable in the heavenlies. Lord, we're standing because we're saying, God, I need my anointing reactivated. I need, I need you to forgive me, Lord, for all the negativity I've been speaking and all the stuff I've been thinking about and all the stuff that's been bogging me down. I, I surrender it to you, Lord. You've anointed me for greatness. You've anointed me to change lives. You've anointed me to do something supernatural. And Lord, today I say I surrender all to you. Change me. Fix me. Use me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody say amen. Let the people of God say praise the Lord. My, 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 my. We thank Pastor Alex Royce for making some time in your schedule to be with us. And uh, we just really appreciated this word. We want to remind you that this evening, at what time, everybody? Three o'clock right at the Linwood Church. Pastor Royce will be there. And he's going to be dealing with leadership. Remember, leadership is for everybody. Amen? So he's going to be dealing with leadership. And so we want to make sure that you make it out at 3 o'clock. We have food prepared for you right downstairs. And so you don't have to go anywhere. Amen? Amen. And so that you can uh, be able to see what the Lord has to say through his manservant, Pastor Alex Royce, as it relates to leadership. I'm going to ask that you will stand. I'm going to ask that you will stand right now. And we're going to pray, asking for the power of the Holy Spirit again. Wednesday, Wednesday, right after prayer service, we do have a meeting. And the meeting is going to be dealing with the constituency that's going to take place. It's going to be dealing with the officers for this year. And also it's going to be dealing with those projects. So you might want to come to see what's happening in the church. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father, I thank you so much, God. I thank you, Father, for this word. Lord, we got to understand, Lord, that you're coming soon and everybody can do something because you've given each and every one of us purpose, God. And we pray, Lord, that as we embrace your spirit, as we embrace the direction you have for our life, we ask, God, that we will remember that when we're walking, we're not walking alone, but we're walking with the Spirit of God. Now, Father, go before us to guide us, beside us to protect us, beneath us to carry us, and above us to shelter us, both now and forevermore. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated, then you'll be dismissed.